business is quite a common mood. It makes a person focus his attention much more closely on himself. Perhaps he notices his heart beating or his muscles tensing. Yes. People often think in this mood of anxiousness that it's leading to a mental illness. Actually, it almost never does. Perhaps I can help you if I give you an idea of how your mind works. You see, Jones, emotions actually can cause real physical pain. The conscious mind is a pleasant, sunny place where normal thoughts have free reign. The unconscious mind is dark and mysterious and harbors such thoughts as, I'm lonesome. Nobody pays any attention to me. I wish I were dead. I must be losing my mind. These thoughts are constantly trying to get into the conscious mind to get past the censor who polices the band. It's his job to keep them out. Hey! Here's a little thought that keeps popping up. I'm lonesome. I wish I was dead. Huh? What did you say? I said I wished I was dead. You must be stupid. I just can't see things clearly. Outside, bums! No, but the thing you get the light for me, brother. I don't know. Please, 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 Nobody pays any attention to me. They're blind to real talent. <laughs> Watch this. I must be losing my mind! Holy cats, I must be losing mine! Get here, you. You. Don't ever do that again. Give me a hug. Censored out of the conscious mind, these self-pitying thoughts tumble into the lap of old unconscious mind, the dormant parent of all your emotions, and arouse him with their clamor. They goad him to find another way for them to assert themselves on your conscious mind. So this brute who never forgets anything that ever happened to you remembers a certain incident. Mm. Mm. Which got you a nice lot of sympathetic attention in the past. An incident which your conscious mind may have completely forgotten, but your unconscious remembers. And now he knows just what to do. I've got it, boys. Into the car with you. Come on, fellas, let's go. <laughs> this is this is gonna be fun. <laughs> glad to hear that. A lot of boys feel about the way you do. There was another seaman in here a few days ago named Scott, a big strapping lad who during his civilian days never had anything wrong with him. He won golden glove tournaments and was a very pretty fighter indeed. Then he landed in the Coast Guard and found himself no more important than any other seaman. He found himself being ordered around by a petty officer half his size, being told what to do and how to do it.
having his hat straightened for him, and even having the lint dusted off his clothes. He, a champion, in his own right. And even in the classroom, he found himself thrown for a loss by simple navigation. He just couldn't turn out an adequate notebook. So, one day, he turned up at sick bay with a bad stomach ache. Physical exam, x-ray, and laboratory studies proved there was nothing physically wrong, so he was sent to the psychiatrist. What went on in his mind was something like this. He had a lot of self-pitying thoughts running around in his mind for all his toughness. And of course, he wouldn't let his conscious mind think them. Spencer chases them into his unconscious mind, and old man unconscious decides that what Seaman Scott needs is a darn good foolproof excuse for not doing so well right now. And he takes care of that in his own way. strong enough to control his emotions absolutely. I have some notes here that I'll give you. Look them over. They may clear up some of the things that have been bothering you. Thank you, sir. Sound mental health is our nation's greatest asset, and this we must maintain. With it, let us have pride. Pride in our core and in our service. And we must have faith and hope in our cause, our way of life, and for a better world tomorrow. <laughs>